what's going on everybody space balls here welcome back to the awakening chaos era video all right everyone as you know we got a patch recently and what i'd like to do is a few days after the patch comes out i like to talk about it see what affected the game the most what changes we're going to need to make going forward and the reason i don't go over the patch like right when it comes out is because i like to play it a little bit and see how much the patch actually affects the game now with that being said the last patch was pretty solid all the changes I'm on board with, the only one I'm not a big fan of is the Party of Three change where they kind of nerfed the drop. They basically stopped it from dropping as much, and I don't really get why. I know it drops really good gear, but it's still RNG at the end of the day. I'm going to make a separate video on that in the future. But outside of the Party of Three, everything else was pretty solid. They balanced the game a lot. They did a lot of awesome changes. If you guys haven't seen the patch notes, they're always posted on our Discord and also Awakening's main Discord as well. I want to touch on two characters here today, which is Mary and Blackhorn, because everybody's saying that Mary got completely nerfed and she's unusable, and that's just not true. And the best part of this patch is that Blackhorn went from trash tier to basically very, very good, if not A plus tier. So I want to talk about Blackhorn, where you would use him, how to build him, what content to bring him into, and we're also going to touch on Mary as well to decide if she's still usable or not. So let's just get right into this one. So as you guys know, I'm not a big fan of building elites. I played so many gotcha games at this point. I don't six star elites anymore because what happens is as you get six, seven, eight months into the game, elites tend to fall off traumatically because of their base stats, not because of their kits. They might be really, really good, solid, rounded units, but the way gacha games work, once you start getting epics and legendaries, the base stats of elites just drop down completely and it makes them worthless once you start getting into late game, even mid to late game. Their base stats fall off so much other units in the game, for example, in this game, Celestial Keen is just three times better because of his base stats. And the same thing happened with Zachary. Everybody's six-star Zachary. Not everybody's kicking themselves in the butt for doing it because now he's just not strong enough once you get into mythic content. As far as supports go, it's a little bit different because you can get more play out of supports because you're just stacking, you know, support substats on them, defense, speed, HP. So it's not as big of a deal if you're building a DPS because if you're building a DPS, it's much harder to get that 45, 5,000 attack on an elite champion than suppose if you're building an epic or a legendary champion. So the thing with Mary is they took her two turn invincibility and they dropped it down to one. Before this nerf or adjustment, she was completely broken OP. She was basically an epic, if not a legendary herself. Everybody was using her. She was used all over the game. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. And I know some of you guys are going to be pissed off that they did this. It's just like any buffer nerf that happens in the game. Some people tend to get mad about it. And I understand because you build something, you put resources into it, and then it just hurts to see that champion or hero take a hit. I get it. Trust me. I've been playing gotcha games for the past 10 years, so I know how it feels. Just remember guys, I play the game just like you guys do. And I was building Mary slowly on the side just in case I wanted to use her for Void Tower. And the thing is you still can absolutely use her for Void Tower. The only change they made is they took her invincibility from two turns to one turn. I think it was a well needed change. Mary is still 100% usable for what she is an elite champion. So don't feel bad or be mad at yourself for building her and putting resources into her. She's still really good. You could still use her exactly where you would have used her before. Now of course you're not getting two turns of invincibility. You're only getting one, but she's still definitely a usable champion in my book. So with that being said, let's move on to Blackhorn because Blackhorn for me was huge. He went from being completely trashed here to just not even worth building. Basically, you'd buy the battle pass and you're like, oh, I got Blackhorn. And then you realize right away that Blackhorn was terrible and you really weren't going to use him and he's just going to sit in your storage or your box, whatever you want to call it because this game doesn't have a storage. Then you bring him up to four or five stars and you realize real quick that he's basically useless because his cooldown was seven turns. And I believe once you skilled up, it was five turns. And they did a huge change on Blackhorn. So what they did was they took the cleanse off his A3 or his ultimate as you guys call it or as we call it. And they took that cleanse and they put it on the totem which I think was a great idea because now Blackhorn is so versatile you can use him in so many different pieces of content as a support should be. Before this buff Mary was like a billion times better than Blackhorn. Even with Mary's little nerf that she got she was still better than Blackhorn until he got this little buff or adjustment. So now the way Blackhorn works is on his A2 on a 4 turn cooldown which is much more reasonable. He's going to put up his totem, which is going to heal you. And it's also going to remove a positive effect from each character every single turn. So it's not all positive effects, but it's four per turn on each one of your allies. Or three or two, depending on how many allies you have left. And this works great in the Ash Rune dungeon or any dungeon that just puts up a ton of debuffs. Because at the end of every round, he's going to clear out the bomb or the defense break. And before, Blackhorn was completely useless in Ash Rune dungeon. Now he's triple S tier for that dungeon. He actually fits that dungeon perfectly. I have a team built myself around Blackhorn. I will show you guys at the end of the video. We'll do a run with Blackhorn so you can see how effective his new totem is. So at the end of the round, this totem is going to heal and it's going to clear one debuff on each ally. Now from his ultimate, they took it down to a four turn cooldown when it's maxed out. So basically they made it from seven to six. Once you max it out, it's four turns and this is going to give you heal over time. 
And this is really good paired with his A2 because now you have so many heals coming in. You don't even need to use the heal spell anymore. Now you could just pair his A2 with his A3 and this dude is just going to take control of all the healing. You don't have to worry about bringing a second healer or a second support because Blackhorn is going to take care of all of it. And then on top of that on his A1 he also has an attack down. So he's mitigating the damage even more. Just making Blackhorn a top tier support. So if you guys didn't realize how buffed he got in the last patch... He got a significant buff. And then he also has a really cool trait where his abilities are going to heal for 8% of the health. And the reason I want to make this video is because I know so many people built Blackhorn. They got him from the Battle Pass. Some people have multiple copies. They have his trait. And basically what happened was they 5 or 6 starred him and they never used him. He's just sitting there collecting dust. So I wanted to put this out there so you guys know that he's not trash at all anymore. Definitely get him back. Wipe the dust off him and throw him into some content because he's going to do great for you. Now, I know in a lot of content, you don't necessarily need to support, but I think in Void Tower, hard and normal. Maybe even Guild Boss, he's going to shine now because of how versatile his healing is and the fact that he clears the debuffs on his totem now. So if you do decide to build Blackhorn, we can see that he has an S in health. So we're going to build him as a support because this man is a support. Priority-wise, we're going to put health and defense, and then we also want some speed on him. Now, depending on speed tuning, you might want Blackhorn to move last. I honestly don't think it matters in this game because it goes by rounds and not turns. Now, if it went by turns, you don't want your team to proc out of the buffs, so you're always going to want Blackhorn to move last. But because this game goes by rounds, I don't think it really matters if he moves first or last. The way I have him right now, I just want some speed so he would take the first turn over the boss and the minions. But I think overall speed tuning him is not that big of a deal. It's not like where you need Pacific Damage Dealers to go first. I don't think it really matters what position Blackhorn is in. So you don't have to go too crazy with the speed. I think the main priority is health and defense. So the way I looked at it was I wanted a lot of health and a lot of defense. So I went with two health sets and a speed set just to give him a little bit of speed because, again, you don't want the boss and minions to outspeed you. So you do want to try to get some speed on there somewhere, especially if you're going to use defense boots like I did. And then we went double HP on the ring and the necklace, and we went with two HP sets, just being able to stack a ton of health on this man. And being that he has an S in health, it's really, really easy to do so. Now, before I changed this gear, I actually had him in plus three gear. And I didn't do his abilities at all. I actually just did his abilities before the video. And I was using him in Ash Rune Dungeon completely unabilityed, basically no gear, and he was still working fine. I don't think you need to six star black corner if you're just using him as a support. There's really no need to. Because when it comes to support, it's not like DPS is where you need to squeeze out every little bit of DPS. So if your support is not dying, there's really no need to six star them. If you guys follow me on Twitch, you'll know the other day I really did nothing to him. I left him as a four star, I threw him in the team, and he worked fine. And now that I know he's good, I started working on him, doing his ability, his glyphs. I think I had him in gray glyphs as well, and he was still working fine. But now that I know I'm going to use Blackhorn long term, I'm willing to invest in him. And that's a recommendation I can give to all of you guys. Don't heavily invest into a character until you know you're going to use that character long term. Now that I know I'm going to bring him into my bounties and my void tower, and I'm going to use him in Ash consistently or Ash 12 consistently, I had no problem investing and putting a bunch of resources into this character because now I know that he's top tier. So that's my man Blackhorn, that's how you build him. And if you're going for his skills and you get super lucky, you don't need his A1. You really just need his A2 and his A3, honestly. And as far as the A3 goes, you just want to get to level 5. You don't necessarily need level 6 unless you see that your team is dying because you're just short a little bit of health, then having level 6 would be fine. I think the most important one is the A2 and then the A3, just getting the cooldowns. And honestly, I really don't even think you need his A3 to be skilled up at all because if you look at the totem, it's on a 4-turn cooldown. And this goes up for 3 turns, so it's always there. It'll be down for one turn. Next turn, it comes back up. So you basically have a forever heal and cleanse on the team if you bring in Blackhorn now. The fact that it stays for three turns, it goes away, comes right back. It's a beautiful thing. So I would recommend just getting this maxed out. This way, you don't have to worry about the ultimate. And then you're going to have healing from this. And you're also going to have the clear debuffs. Day one, if you get lucky enough and nothing goes into this, just leave it alone. You honestly don't need damage on Blackhorn. You are not using him for his damage at all. You're only using him for his totem. Basically, just using the man. Yeah, you only want his totem. That's all you really care about. Everything else would just be a plus at the end of the day. I just got super unlucky and everything went into his A1 before it went into his A2. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done anything in his A1 because you guys know how rough it is farming legendary abilities. Much easier to farm epics. So I will see you guys once we get to the boss and then we'll end this video and we'll talk about Blackhorn and how OP he is now.
poof, we're back, and you guys will see that my man Blackhorn basically carried that entire fight. He is crucial to this team. If I didn't have Blackhorn, I would not be able to do this. Now, you guys might say, why am I using the heal spell? And that's strictly for Nathalia, because my Nathalia is not A2 yet, or Ascension 2, Trait 2, however you refer to it. And that's a big handicap for this team. Once I'm able to get my Nathalia A2, I could probably take out Hydressa for something else. And I could definitely change out that heal spell. It's just right now, I have to kind of favor the fact that my Nathalia is not A2 yet. But overall, we were really just looking at Blackhorn in the fight. And you can clearly see that Blackhorn now is triple S tier when it comes to the Ash Gear dungeon. Marine Shadowblood used to be. Now, the thing is, she's not a bad character now. She's just not as good anymore because the bomb is now random after the patch. And that's another reason I want to showcase this team so you guys can see the bomb goes up random now. It doesn't go on the first in line like it used to. So I think once I get the A2 on Nathalia, I will be able to put Marine Shadowblood back into the team for Hydrissa. It's just right now, because my Nathalia can't keep up with all the damage, I actually have to turn off her ultimate in order for this team to work. I don't know if you guys noticed that. But because she's not Ascension 2, I need to turn off her ultimate. Otherwise, she won't do enough damage to keep up with the minions. And then the bomb will explode. Boss will do big damage. And the whole team will fail. Because no matter what you have on the team, no matter how much HP you have stacked, if you take the bomb damage from the boss, you are going to die... It's like 40k damage or something like that. There's no way you're going to be able to withstand it. Or at least your DPSs will never be able to withstand that amount of damage. So this team is working great. And I feel like once I get the A2 on the Thalia, if that ever happens, eventually it will because I'll farm the potion to get it done. I will be able to bring this team straight into Ash 12 with a few changes. I think Hydris is going to come out of the team. And something like Shadow Blood is going to go into the team. And then I think this will work perfect for Ash Stage 12. This video is not really about Ash 12. I just wanted to showcase Blackhorn. I think that's the best place to showcase him right now because you guys can see how effective he is, the way the totem was just running the entire fight. And another shout out I do want to give is to the devs. They're doing a great job. I know some of you guys aren't happy with some of these buffs, nerfs, and changes that they're making into the game. But look at it this way, at least they're doing it. I can't tell you how many gotcha games I played in the past where they don't even care enough to make these changes. And at least when they're making the changes, they're making significant changes to where it's actually going to change the character, make it better or make it worse. And then they can kind of iron out in the future. At least they're willing to make these substantial changes and see where the game goes instead of just leaving the game broken. Same thing with Mary. I know some of you guys are upset about it, but at least they're willing, again, to do these things and see the game grow in a balanced, fair manner. Instead of just having a bunch of unbalancedness and the game just being complete trash because of it, but I want to know what you guys think, like always. What do you think of Blackhorn? What do you think of Mary? What do you think of the last patch? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say, so comment down below and let me know what you're thinking. Thank you guys so much for the support here on YouTube. We still have the sub celebration going on. I didn't pick the winners yet, so you still have a chance to get a part of it. So go down below, click the video, and get a part of the sub celebration. If you guys want to follow me on Twitch and Discord, those are always linked down below. We do two monthly giveaways on Discord, random giveaways on Twitch. If you want to be a part of the random giveaway that we do here on YouTube, all you do is sub to the channel. Like and comment on my past 10 videos and I will automatically enter you into the random giveaway. I truly do love each and every single one of you. I will see you in the next one. Spaceballs out. Peace.